Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to the sixth episode of OMG Craft. My name is Chad Johnson, and we are. this show is going to cover all of your Minecraft needs, make you a Minecraft expert in no time. Unfortunately, you have to watch all of our shows to do it, so uh, it's kind of, it takes a lot of dedication and takes a lot of time to make sure that you become a Minecraft expert. This week we have a really awesome show planned for you. We're going to get into a little bit of snapshot news. Uh, we are going to learn how to make bucket servers. We'll get into that a little bit later. And then when you have a bucket server, what do you need? You need bucket server plugins. So our top three picks at the end of the show are all bucket server plugins just for you. Let's start off with a little bit of news. This week, there was another snapshot, and uh, we got to see some new mobs in the game. First off is a bat mob. Uh, it, is a, it is the first flying mob that we've seen in the game, and uh, it hangs from ceilings just like this um, when he isn't flying. When he is flying, he flies all around. He sleeps during the day. Um, you can imagine walking into a cave having a few of these guys jump down, fly at your face, scare you to death. That'd be awesome. Um, and this, of course, is for the Pretty Scary Update, which should be coming in uh, around Halloween time. So what else do you need for a Halloween update? Well, you need a witch. She's a witch. She turned me into a newt. Um, you wouldn't believe it. Uh, she has a nice, uh, you can see uh, she has a wart on the side of her nose. She is an aggressive mob. I assume that it's a she. It could be a he, looking at that face. Um, a magical wart is what uh, Dinnerbone called it. Um, and this is a uh, uh, aggressive mob, so she should like throw potions at you and uh, attack you when um, she sees you. Um, so be careful if you're playing on the snapshot. Finally, the uh, beacon block texture got updated. So uh, now instead of just being sort of like a diamond uh, block with uh, with uh, you know nothing on the side, it now looks sort of jewel-like, and the uh, the actual beacon texture is different. Um, and there's also animations now with the the beacon block. Um, new new animations. Also, on top of that, not only did uh, this week we get a um, uh, an A update, but we got a B update. So if you are uh, confused about how uh, these things work, um, the whole snapshot name is 12W38A. Uh, um, and what that stands for is 12 is the year, W is for week, and we are at week 38. And then A is the um, the number within this week. So we got a B update, which means that this is another update within the same week 38. So in that, um, uh, it fixed the say command, and uh, we also it added some uh, sound effects. And uh, the witch loot is now potion ingredients uh, for you. Finally, and that's that's it for snapshot news. Finally, I wanted to show off. A, a YouTube video by Seth Bling. Um, he uh, and a few others, Hypixel, I believe. Yes, here we are. It's very loud. Um, they did something pretty freaking awesome. This is Team Fortress 2, the Dust Bowl map. Um, and this requires absolutely no um, uh, plugins, server plugins, or. or um, hacks on the server side. It uses the new command blocks and potions um, to have every single character in Team Fortress 2. Um, normally, I don't like to cover map updates in news, but um, this one seemed so outrageous, so cool, and I have seen um, uh, Seth Bling mentioned, you know, he mentioned the redstone underneath and um, uh, all, all of that sort of stuff. So I wanted to bring it up in news because it seemed quite interesting. Um, and you can go to youtube.com slash Seth Bling to check out this video. There is a map download link in the description. Go ahead and check that out, I would uh, suggest, because uh, very, very, very cool stuff out of Seth Bling. 
Thank you, Seth Blaine. That's it for news. We got done with that. That was pretty easy, right? Now, straight on in to bucket server mayhem. What am I talking about when I say bucket server? Um, to bring all of this around, I am actually not an expert in this field. I have enlisted our good friend, Curly. He was on last show. He happens to be our um, server administrator for um, uh, Twit's Minecraft server, um, mc.twit.tv, if you want to find out more about that. So without further ado, I would like to say hello to Curly. How are you doing? Hey, buddy. How are you doing? Getting by. I'm learning all this stuff at the same time you are because yeah? I haven't had the time to look at any of the news as well. What about bat mobs? Are you excited There's about bats? bats? Bats in the game. I want a bats. flying mob. I've always wanted bats. I'm, it's really exciting. It's the first flying mob. They're, the chickens could never fly. Um, you, If you ran into a server glitch, maybe your squid would fly in the air. But <laughs> Or potato. Or potato. You know, potato. Um, so... Uh, I'm excited about the bat, and uh, and maybe you know with the AP uh, with the what is API? it? A no, not API. I said API because that's on my brain. But uh, artificial intelligence that um, they're working on, he he'll be able to fly in a less derpy fashion than the squids did. That'd be or awesome. The dragons. Or the or the dragons, derpy dragons. You know what? The dragon flies. The dragon flies, flies. Well you're right. It is a flying mob, but it is not in the overworld. At least ah, not. you're right. You're right. So, we are getting into bucket server craziness. Now, when I say a bucket server, that's different than a normal Minecraft server. And can you help me explain to the audience what makes a bucket server different from a normal Minecraft server? Well, so last, last week we went over what it was to run a vanilla Minecraft server to get you up and running with that. Right. And uh, what 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 happens literally, you know, in a week of you starting a Minecraft server uh, that's vanilla is you run into the limitations of that server. You you quickly realize that you know the the one of the first people the, the thing people ask is like, oh, how do I protect things or how do I keep people that I don't want in if you don't want to have a whitelist, for instance, and uh, how do you give, you know, you don't want to give with vanilla server you have two options for. Uh, for players' abilities in the server. Like, either they're just players or they have op and they do everything. They can shut the server down, they can stop it, they can delete the world. Like, so you need, you need, what was needed in the community was uh, some kind of modular system, an API for uh, allowing you to modify the game uh, for the servers to do what you need to do with it. And uh, there was a couple iterations of things. I want to mention something like HMOD um, for people that hung out in Minecraft in the old days. Uh, and then Bucket came along, and um, Bucket is that. It's, it's a modified version of the server, the, the vanilla jar server file, that allows you to have a plugin folder, and plugin developers can write things towards Bucket so that you can have great um, additions to the game that you need, like stuff that we showed last week, like the anti-cheat systems and you know being able to fly or being able to have uh, right. extremely helpful creative modes and whatnot. And uh, the reason that I wanted to cover... A server platform that has an a API that you can add your own plugins to is because I really wanted to show off these plugins. The, the, these are some of the most uh, fun things that we have had as a group because when you add plugins to a server, it makes your experience way better. And I had I had hesitated from showing off server plugins because we hadn't covered how people could actually install them themselves. Um, so. Uh, one another thing that I wanted to mention is that well well first uh, you had you had said that you wanted to sort of talk about your inception into Bucket how how you you know what your backstory with Bucket was do you want to get yeah, in a little of, bit of that yeah yeah really really quickly what what we originally did was just exactly what I said we started a server with friends we played on it for about a week or two and we just kind of let everyone that we know via Twitter come in and play and that was kind of the inception of what is now. Twitcraft, actually. Um, and in fact, we thought that we were being pretty smart. We were having daily backups. We were yes. we were doing just about everything we could with a vanilla Minecraft server. That is your only protection uh, with a vanilla server is to basically maintain backups. And you still should do backups even with a bucket server. But but what happened was, uh, even though I was doing it daily, we, one day we had, you know, a lot of people on the server and they were building and then some random kids stumbled across it and came in and they, they destroyed things. I mean, it's known as griefing and it happens all the time. Uh, but I had never run a server or, or even really knew the Minecraft community at that point in time. 
And uh, so we immediately started looking into ways to protect the server. And what we found was at that time, I think it was Big Brother was a plugin for for Bucket. And that is a block logger that logs everything that happens and allows you to roll back any damage that you didn't, you know, want to happen by someone that came in and just griefed the server. And um, that was one of kind of our beginning of it. And then we just started playing with it because we're like, well, now we'll just install this crazy jump mod or these boots that make you have you know, the ability to fly around. <laughs> those boots like were rockets. awesome. I hate those boots. Those boots were the best. <laughs> they, they were fantastic. They just glitched the server a lot. That's yeah. the problem. Yeah, they just required that you loaded like a billion chunks a second. Yeah. Um, I mean, what, when it comes down to it, Minecraft vanilla is not, and I think it's been said before by Notch, like it's not intended to be a long-term running forever kind of situation. Like, it's meant to, you throw it up, you play with your friends for a while, and right. that's, and it's, not, you, it's disposable. It's not know? meant to be your World of Warcraft game that you're going to yeah. jump on and spend, and, and, and hope that your life and your all your creative, you know, power and juices stay on that server. It, it's not meant to be that permanent. Some of the worlds we have added to the Twitcraft server have now, I mean, they, 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 were, they were generated in 1.6, I think, maybe 1.73, <laughs> Like they've they've been around forever. They've gone through world generator updates, and and it's just it's it's great that that we have that ability because that's what people want to see. They want to come back and have a persistent world that they play with their friends in and build awesome things together. As you've seen with some of the creations that you've showed off here. Right, right. Okay, so finally, what I wanted to get into was bucket is the is what we're going to be using, but things may be changing. Things. Most definitely will be changing oh, in they're changing. the future. <laughs> um, Bucket was hired by Mojang, the creators of Minecraft, to integrate this API into the actual Minecraft normal vanilla game. Um, and so what that means is that this service called Bucket will eventually slow down and cease to exist. And once... Mojang integrates an API into their actual Minecraft game. Yeah. And so go dinner ahead. Bone is supposed, dinner Bone is supposedly right now supposed to be working on bringing the vanilla server up to snuff with what Bucket can do currently. Right. So that people can have the ability to write plugins directly for the vanilla server and let people run them and, and not have to go to a second site or, or whatever. And because and, some people find that dangerous and whatnot. And you imagine that, you know, People get viruses all the time thinking they're installing server mods and whatnot. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. So if they did it all within game, it'd be much more secure. So what, what, the reason why, even though that Mojang has hired Bucket, is, the reason that they're still developing Bucket is because, one, the API is not ready. The, I mean, if you ever follow – seriously, if you if you like programming, follow Dinnerbone on Twitter. That poor guy is digging through all the spaghetti code between Notch and Jeb and, like, fixing it up and making it ready for this API that he wants to implement. And – um what 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 the other guys are doing, like Evil Seth um, from the Bucket team, are they're still developing Bucket alongside, so that there's going to hopefully, I mean, there, it's going to be a horrible transition the day that we have to switch over yeah. and and find all these new plugins that are going to work correctly. Um, but they're trying to make it so it's it's eased into it, so we're not just one day we're out of Bucket. Like it, they could have done, I mean, they could have been no Bucket right now, and we could have been waiting with no servers. Right. Right, because I mean, the, since since they've been hired, we've had one dot one and one dot two updates, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, one dot three, wait, one dot three dot one and one dot three dot two, um, and so all servers that used Bucket would still be on one dot two dot five, without you know all the all the things that one dot three uh, afford us. If so, I had it my way, our server would still be on one two five. <laughs> it's a little bit buggy. I'm not gonna lie. There's, I just want a lighting fix. If anyone yes. knows what that is. Yes. You understand my pain. Right. Okay, so enough about um, what Bucket is. Uh, we now know what we can use it for and why we may use it. So uh, let's go ahead and get on into installing Bucket over um, – and what we're going to do is you can go back to um, a previous episode of OMG Craft. Which one was it? Uh, Setting up a simple server, episode two. And that's how – that will get more in-depth on how to set up a server on both the Mac and the PC side. I covered both of them in that, in that uh, show. So we are going to use a few of the things that we did previous – uh, back then, and I'm I'm gonna kind of skip over some ex explanation in this episode because we already covered it in episode two. So first thing that you're gonna do is you're going to go to bucket.org, and so that you know, it is not spelled 
the normal way. It is b u k k i t dot org. Um, if you look for b u k k e t or something, you'll I think you'll actually get a bong. I think it's there's a gravity oh, bong excuse called. Excuse me, what? Bucket. <laughs> yeah, and just just. You know, just trivia. Just you know, well, so I, just, you know. I had I had noticed you were misspelling bucket in the entire doc. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I so had a, just from. just uh, things that you learn while you're researching for OMG Craft, um, and that looks uh, like this. And what you're going to do uh, go to is get uh, Craft Bucket right there. You'll go ahead and download it. This has um, uh, obviously uh, in installation instructions for Linux, for Windows, uh, for Mac. Um, and so this wiki that it, it uh, points you to, sorry, you're not seeing the whole page. This wiki that it points you to is very useful. In fact, I uh, was in there uh, learning myself. So if for some reason this video tutorial doesn't help you out, uh, you always have the wiki on the website. So once you download the um, uh, craft bucket jar, what I went ahead and did is I threw it into my old server file. And then this is where, Curly, you helped me out. Um, yeah, the, the the beauty of Bucket is it is, even though it's a modified server, it is still a Minecraft server. So it runs and acts the same way. Um, it just has the added benefit of allowing you to install plugins. Um, so what you what you really can do is you can take any world that you've already made or you made with the last episode like we did and just throw the jar file in there, the bucket jar. I, I, I usually rename it. It's usually a longer name, right, Chad? Right. It's, um, when I downloaded it, it, it had um, some data at the very end of it that was like, you know, version blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I went ahead and deleted that and just named it Craft Bucket. Um, and Perfect. Right. So, yeah, so what you, do, what you do is you throw that in that folder, and um, if you look at our previous episode, you just change the script that you use to start um, the bucket server. Right. I so, think you'd have to look at over what? here, this is the server. I, I like to put it right in the hand of my little <laughs> avatar. He's holding. Hey, that's me! Look at that. Yeah, yeah, you're right there. I love that you're uh, you're still covering over my sister. Yep. In yeah. In fact, let's put the. That's where the server should actually go. There we go. So once we go ahead and open up the server, this is the file that we used uh, pre in the previous um, show. Let me make it look more similar. Whoa. Whoa. It's arranged by name. How about that? Oh, OS 10. Oh, OS 10. So, yes, th this is the, the jar file. It's named 1.3.1 rev2. Um, and then we just changed our script that we had made in the, in the past episode. Sorry, you can't see that. Um, to point instead of the um, other, other uh, jar, we used it just to point at uh, this one. Yeah, you literally just change the Minecraft dot right. you know underscore server jar to that, and uh, you can start it right up, and it'll be the same world, right? And we'll load, and it'll look exactly the same. I mean, really, nothing's different at that point. And so, and also, just pro tip: this is something I found out. If you open it up in text edit, um, if you don't want to type out this long string, this users dot craft dot desktop dot server dot craft bucket blah blah blah, um, on the Mac side, you can just grab your jar file and drop it in. And it will go ahead and type all of that for you. Sorry, that was a little bit uh, zoomed out. So I'll go ahead and do it again. All you have to do is grab this file, drag it in. It types it all out for you. And then you can just replace um, that, that text before. Oh, uh, OS 10. Oh, OS 10. Thank you so much. <laughs> so we're going to save this and close it out. And just like before, all you have to do is double click the, um, the, the script, the shell. Well, you, you do, but I don't think Max come. Oh, that's right. So, so uh, by the way, I just want to point out, you can see that it's opening up files. It's creating the things that it needs up in the background. Yeah. What just I like, did... Just to, like vanilla Minecraft, it will generate the files it needs. Right, right. If, if there's something... And you can even see in the log, I believe that there are some warnings. Yeah, warning, spawn location for a world was not stuff, adjusting, you know, the, it'll, it'll give you some things like that. Um, uh, and just another pro tip for us Mac users, um, what I did uh, to make this fast was I did open with and then I chose terminal as the, the, the default um, program. And so I didn't have to continuously go into other open with terminal. Um, I have some, some, texting, uh, some texting software, some uh, uh, text edit software that, that kept, it kept uh, forcing into. So now that we have that running, now that I double-clicked, we have a server, right? Yes. Uh, well, someone was asking about for Microsoft people, for, for right. the Windows side. Um, this, the same way you start the server on the Windows side, um, as long as you're using the JAR, because it is all Java. Right. So when you, when you did your tutorial, did you show them how to start it with stuff, or you just use the executable? We, we explained that you could use the executable. I do not remember... 
if we made a script or not to make sure that it had more than the allocated half a gig of memory. Um, you make basically a batch script. It's the same right. thing in Windows as there is on the, the, the Mac and Linux side, or a, which is a batch script. Um, but you can find – all of those tutorials are written separately on that wiki that you showed earlier. Right. Um, you, you basically can't use the executable, obviously, because the executable is just a wrapper for the jar for the vanilla Minecraft server on Windows. So you have to do it the, the quote-unquote hard way, which is actually point at Java and tell Java to load the server jar. Right. But it's pretty simple, though. I Really, right. you can follow the tutorial. And, and the biggest problem that I had when I tried to do that on the PC side was not having my naming correct. Um, was not, you know, the ampersand app data, uh, you know, dot Minecraft bin. Um, yes. You know, if, if uh, I think I just tried to do the normal, like, oh, I think it'll be in the same folder, um, and I <laughs> ran into problems. Um, so I would suggest typing all of that out if you're really having difficulty um, uh, starting up your server. So now that we have it up and running, let me go ahead and just open up Minecraft and see if, um, let's go to default, let's go ahead and log in, and let's see if we can connect. Now the way that I'm going to test this out is by just connecting on a multiplayer. I'm going to add a server, and then the server address is just going to be um, localhost. Local, lo lol host. Lol host. Um, local host. There we go. Um, uh, Should work, right? And there we are. So you can hey. see that um, I can connect. Let's go ahead and join in. Um, if you remember us creating the first server on the other episode, this is this is the same world um, that uh, that I believe with these awesome lighting errors over here. <laughs> hey, if, lighting bug. Hey, if you didn't remember. <laughs> What the lighting error was, if uh, you were wondering, when Curly was upset earlier. Hey, 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 dinner, hey dinner bone, stop hey. making beacons and command blocks and <laughs> right. make the lighting bug. Right. I don't light. know. A witch versus this? I don't know. I'm, I'm kidding with you. Um, uh, so this is the world. Now, it's... It's the same. It's the same. Exactly. That's <laughs> what I was trying to say. It's like, it doesn't seem very exciting because we did that in episode two. Yes. So the... Ex <laughs> Go ahead. I was gonna say now. Now all you have, if you look in that folder that you had uh, shown, is that Bucket has generated an, an additional folder in, um, in that in that in the server folder called plugins, and that's where you dump your plugins. Uh, Chad, are you able to show um, the Bucket.org website again? Yeah, of course. So if we go back you to Bucket, show them that they can. You can click. Uh, if you go back one, yeah, you can show them that you can click uh, get plugins. Right. And that is a, a it's all the way on the right. It's a yeah, searchable right. uh, interface for all these plugins. And you, there's just uh, dig through here sometime if you have, you know, time. It's amazing the wow. amount of things that people come up with. Well, wow, this uh, this join cake one. This looks very interesting. What is? <laughs> I mean, there's things from from um, simple simple plugins that allow your server to make an automated message every hour. To plugins that let you marry other players. Like this one. Join yeah. Cake does exactly what it says. When players join the game, um, they get free cake. Well, there you go. There you go. Well, why, why wouldn't you want that? <laughs> you want free cake. Okay, so um, so, th so the bucket.org website is where you can find these plugins. And hopefully if, if your players on the server can also uh, dig through there. Um, like when we wanted to find a, a shop, a sign shop, Yes. Um, we sent you a whole bunch of links for, for different things. Yeah. Um, there, the, as you imagine what happens with any kind of community-based, because uh, this is all open to anyone. Anyone that knows Java can write any plugin for this stuff. Uh, and there's great tutorials on the Internet. But at, as you can imagine, it is flooded with uh, everyone's very minutely different version of doing things the same way, you know, do, or doing right. things a different way, uh, but the same thing. Right. And, uh, yeah, so there's tons of, like, the idea of, Letting players have some kind of stationary, persistent shop, or having you know blocks being logged like it's all it's all been done a million different times, and so you just got to find the one that fits your needs, uh, and your users' needs. Cool. So I have I have three plugins that I want to install for later when we get to the top three picks. So how would I go about doing that? To install them, you go to that page. Uh, okay. That you uh, you showed up the uh, the plugins, 
and you'll find a download for the version. Uh, right now, we're running the newest version of Minecraft, so you don't have to worry about versioning. But you need to get the one that's compatible with your version, and then you you throw the the dot jar file of the plugin into the plugins folder. Cool. So um, this first simple. one is DynMap. So all you have to do is click download. It'll take you to. Um, is this the versioner? Yeah. If Here you look are. at if you look at it, it should somewhere say what game version uh, on the right underneath the date. Yeah, it looks like a game version 1.3.2. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And then you just click download, and it'll download it. Um, this one actually downloads as a zip. You just un unzip the file. And yeah. You what, what typically happens? Um, what typically happens when you run the server for the first time? Because right now the server is running. You should probably stop the server. But okay. um, one of the things it does is it if it, it, it senses the plugin in the folder, and then it it'll make its little folder inside the plugins folder for its own configuration files. And so at that point, um, you start the server, it makes its configuration files, you stop the server, and then you can um, edit the configuration files to your needs at that point. Some of them, like DynMap, for instance, come with files that it, it needs or are already pre-configured for you so that you it's a zip file, you open it up, you put the jar where it needs to be, and you put the folder where it needs to be at that point. Cool, cool. So um, I actually, I think we, we may have... Uh -huh. Remember that little tip, that little tip that you gave me that we should, that I should have put at the end of my jars off. Yes. Remember that? Yeah. Ch Chad already loaded the server with all the plugins in it. Oh, is that? Is, did you already see that in the code? I saw that. Yeah, you were complaining about the warnings. Those were all coming from DynMap. Ah, got it. Nice. Okay, so. So um, we skipped ahead. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of TV magic where you bake a cake and then it just happens to be there for you. Um, I didn't. I didn't want to download the, these lives, so I went ahead and downloaded them and added them into the plugins folder. I didn't realize it was going to be that easy. Yep. So just you. starting the server, it it was able to see them and just put, plug them in. Yeah, it's very simple. It's made for 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 the the easiest setup that you can possibly ever have. Wow. So you actually uh, the server that you joined was already running multi. Uh, the not want to spoil it. The other no. plugins we're going to talk about. Right, right. And you can Dynamo. say them by name because because getting into them later is is really like showing the features is really um, you know what the exciting part is. So I saw I saw multiverse load up and I saw magic carpet and dynamap. So very cool. So um, that's is there anything else to say with bucket? Do, I mean, do you do you want to show do you want to show the the configuration files for those? Yeah, real quick? yeah. Where would I find those? Go, go in the plugin folder where you would place the plugins, and you Got should it. now find folders. You know, now there's folders. There's also a plugin metrics folder, which wow. is a snooper. But uh, uh, ma like, if you go into Magic Carpet, for instance, you can see the very simple configuration file that's there. Um, huh. If you open up that config uh, YAML, uh, YAML file, I don't know how to say YAML, Me but neither. it's YAML. Uh, oh and then my you God. can edit. Yeah, so you edit things, and then uh, if you stop the server again and restart it after you make changes, they will now be live in the game. So crazy. Yeah. Okay. See, none of that. None of that was there prior to it, so that had to get generated the first time you ran the server. So let me. So it doesn't look like. Um, be sure to use slash mr to change the settings while you're running. Very cool. Uh, okay, that's so I could learn a little bit about Magic Carpet there. Usually, you'll you'll want to reference the Bucket Dev plugin website for the plugin to learn about what these configs do. Okay, got it. They are they are all written by different people, and they all have different skills and decisions for how their plugins work. Right, right. There, there is no. I mean, other than the actual API, there is no rhyme or reason. Uh, Do you want to talk about multiverse first? If you want to leave that open, yeah. Only, let's go ahead up. and let. So, so let's say that you know now we are ending our bucket conversation, and let's get into our plugin conversation. We have three really good plugins for your brand new bucket server um, that uh, we're going to run through right now. So first is a plugin called Multiverse. And uh, let's explain a little bit about what Multiverse does. If we have multiple world, if we, ha uh, you know, we want, if we want multiple worlds on a server, Multiverse is the answer. You want someone to say spawn in a lobby world and then they could go into a creative world or survival world or have um, you know you know blue team versus red team or a different world for every day of the week who who knows <laughs> whatever your whatever your users want exactly exactly so that is what multiverse does so so you were telling me let's go ahead and get into the config files uh, yeah well so so what multiverse is uh, good for is what you just said like a, a lot of people the first thing they want to do when they start running a long-term server 
is they want to have a lobby. They want to have a place that people can come into and do certain things here and then not certain things in other worlds. Like what we have on TwitCraft is a creative world for the people that like to, you know, really make giant pixel art and not have to worry about mining for resources and stuff. And then we have a world for the people that like to play a survival game where everything that you see that's built is earned by blocks and everything. And so we have to split those worlds up so that you don't have crossover and everything. And using other plugins, we have the ability to control what kind of things people can do in each one so that no one can cheat. But multiverse is the basis of all that. And we use it. We have like 11 worlds, I think. We have some of our old worlds yeah. um, installed on the server. It's it's amazing. Yeah. And, and it's something that Vanilla Bucket is nowhere near able to do at this point. Right. Right, and, and something that the normal Minecraft game isn't. I mean, the only worlds that you have is the overworld, the nether, and the end. I mean, so, so and this can have as many overworlds as you want. Um, so how would I start to create new worlds? So multiverse is extremely advanced and powerful. Um, if, you, if you look at the file that you showed uh, a second ago when you were just digging through stuff, look at the worlds file. Uh, the config file is the basic thing, but the worlds file um, already has taken your world folder that you have just like generically lying in the thing and if you if you think about if you think about the vanilla server that we've talked about before um it has a servers.properties file uh in the, in the beginning that tells you uh if the folder or if the if the world is going to have a hard mode or if it's going to be like what difficulty what what monsters are going to spawn if villagers are supposed to be there and so uh multiverse contains all of those for each world separately as, along with the seed, along with where spawn point is, and it, it it keeps it in a nice, very easy to edit and controllable little YAML file for you. Um, so you can see right now it's already populated with world, world's nether, and world's the end as separate worlds with separate seeds and all of their configs about being on easy or, you know, do you want to keep spawn in memory or if their animals are spawning there. So you can make you can make PvP worlds where people are allowed to kill each other. You can make oh, you're right. a separate world where people are not able to do PvP, uh, all just with this plugin alone, and um, it's very fantastic. So what what I love about it is it has all this. This is very simple to understand right here, right? Right. But um, when when you when you dig down to some of the other features of multiverse, you can you can make worlds. You can generate another world in on the fly in the game just via slash commands. Wow. You can you can import worlds. You like say for instance you download that TF2 world that Seth Bling has made and you want your users to use it. They're on the on the server right now. You don't want to have to stop it, start it up again and put them there and don't know where they're spawn. You can put that folder of that world inside the folder that you have your other world in and just do MV for multiverse import and you'll import that world in and it'll become another world and then you can teleport to it. So let's uh, uh, let's actually make a new world cuz I'd like to see that happen. So, okay, uh, let me bring up the commands. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. So I'm going to go ahead and start up Minecraft. Yeah. Because I need to do that. Do I need to make sure that I'm op on the server? Yeah, you'll need the permissions. Okay, so... Uh, the plugins we're not talking about is permissions. Uh, that allows all, all of these plugins... Uh, Assume that you have I, your permissions correct. Yeah, they, they, there's there's a there's a design structure that's in place where it's called called permissions bucket. So bucket has its own permission hooks that you hook into with your plugin. So all it's kind of like the de facto standard. There are a couple different permission plugins that people have made, but they all kind of adhere to the standards. So if you look at any of these plugins, you'll see like, uh, you'll see either one, be an op on the server to be able to do these commands, or two, give these permission nodes to your players that you want to be able to do these things. Um, that's a little advanced for a single episode, but right. uh, that's that's how you would do that. So yeah, you make yourself op now so you can just do everything. Cool. Uh, so, so one of the things I also wanted to mention with with multiverse, one of the most amazing features of it is it allows you to use custom generators as well. On top of the fact that it can generate generic worlds, wow! So you can you can do like uh, multiverse create a a world and it's a flat world and it'll make a flat world based on Minecraft's internal plugins uh, or or abilities. And then if you want, like for instance, our lobby in Twitcraft is a a little box that we're all in. Um, I don't really think you guys can see the outside of it, but the outside of it originally was just a, a world you know and but that was unfortunately causing resource lag on in my opinion so i used a custom generator with multiverse to make it load a void world so it's just void all it is is no blocks anywhere no flat land no anything wow and that's all thanks to multiverse cool okay so that that is that is ridiculous now i have joined our you know our little server i've op myself yes um and so what would I do? I just so you you will right now. Just go ahead and type uh, m uh, slash mv space info. 
to make sure everything's working right. Hey, and there we are. That's World Info. You're in World, uh, cool. generic name of a world. It's survival. It's on hard. Uh, it's very nice, right? <laughs> yeah, and then could I do two to get to the page two? Yeah, there we are. You can do MV list, and that'll list all the worlds on your server. Nether, normal, and the end. And then if you do MV help, it'll show you all the commands that you have access to, which should be all the commands. Oh, uh, move. I, uh, you have to type it correctly. You got, no, halap. <laughs> halap. <laughs> there we are. Yep, and there's five pages of commands. So wow. That, as you see, that you can see if you look at that MV create uh, that's up there, uh -huh. MV create, name of world, environment, then you can actually change the seed of that world that gets created, and then the generator ID, um, for instance, uh, and then world type and everything. So you, if you want to just create a, a simple world, just do uh, slash MV create, uh, the name of the world. Uh, type shed. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, let's <laughs> name it OMG. Uh, I don't know. Land. Land. Can we add an exclamation point? Is it gonna get mad? I don't know. I, I think that might actually explode. Okay, let's not do it and then. then. Space and then the word normal in caps. If you want it to be a nether, you can do nether or you can do a flat or whatever. All right. but it, and that's world, it. Right? Yeah, it, and you'll you'll hit enter and it'll will generate the world Starting for you. Starting creation. Wow. As simple as that. And your server never has to go down for this stuff. Wow. Completed. And now do now do MV uh, space TP for teleport. Uh-huh. And then OMG land. I guess it has probably it cap sensitive. What? The spawn point of MG land, which is just a generic seed that it came up with its own seed. So. Right, right. Just like what you would with, uh, how, how weird is it that they're both winter areas? <laughs> Apparently, anything with Chad, the name becomes wintery. I guess. Derpy potato squids. Very crazy. Okay, cool. And then what if, um, wow. And then you can even delete your original world at this point. You can do MV delete, and it'll wipe world if you want it to. <laughs> I don't suggest it. Well, you have to be able to type, too. Oh, I also don't think it'll do it because that's your, your, uh, that's your seed world. I think you have to do some other trickery, but I don't remember. Wow. Very cool. And so you could even teleport to a player in a world. Wow. So the helpful, the, the help page is... If you, ever, if you ever wonder how I pop around so quickly in, uh, in TwitCraft, that's what I'm using. Right. You can even kick? Wow. Uh, well, kick is just kicking. Well, oh, yeah. It, it's just I, your normal help index. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I didn't do MV. Oh, ha, 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 ha. I was like, <laughs> what? That's in, wow. That doesn't seem like something that uh, that world, you know, helper would, I don't know. Uh, MV, there we go. Got it. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So, on the fly, like what, what I do, for instance, when we have PvP worlds, I have a one of our, our PvP servers that's like my generically auto ready to be configured and used for any PvP map that any of you guys want to do because sometimes Chad calls me late at night and he's like, let's make a game. Let's do it. <laughs> and I have to get one going really quickly. So I have it all set up and it has multiverse installed and everything. So I can load in a random world that I find like or that you guys find. Like say, you, for instance, you guys want to play Wall which is one of the premier PvP uh, maps. Oh, yeah. And that's atypical to a lot of maps because it has uh, the way it has the suggestion for no animals or no mobs, no monsters in the, in the server. And so with with Envy, I, I can just pop up multiverse, throw it in the folder, import the world, and then modify the world's flags to have no monsters. And I can do that with all without taking you guys off the server at all. That is very, very, very cool. Thanks. Okay, so that's multiverse. Make your own worlds, make multiple worlds, teleport between them, uh, find out info about your worlds. Um, awesome, awesome. A even create worlds that are non-standard using non-standard um, world generation tools. Very, very, very neat. Okay, next. We use a service. Uh, let's go into Dyn Map. One of the world's favorite plugins. Right. Uh, Dyn Map makes beautifully rendered, like, I think it's using the Google API for for maps. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, I mean, it, look, it feels and looks like a, like a custom Google API. Yeah. I don't I don't know if that's just because they they made it after that. But anyways, it looks like it, and it makes it people people always ask for this whenever you make a server. Um, uh, and before it even existed, I remember everyone always wanting something like this. But it makes on the fly, um, constantly updated. You know, as as, as fast as your server can update it, uh, recreations uh, and zoomable creations of a 3D map for you to look at of your server. So you can see where players are at the time, you can see what they're doing and building, and people love it. 
Right. And so, in fact, I was just, uh, someone in chat room was asking, um, how, what, what's the best viewer for worlds um, on, um, uh, you know, servers? And I would say DyneMap is. So let me show you um, f first uh, what, uh, l let's see if I can find... Um, uh, d d d d your your one should be up now that the server is running. Yeah, it's not unfortunately in Safari. So I'm gonna try f to to try try not using localhost as the name. Try eight, using one two seven zero one right um, eight, colon eight one two three. So what it what it does for you is it it um there as someone asked about making maps for the servers. There is um there we go. You're right. There are a bunch of other plugins that do this, but they make. Um, they make files for you to look at. They don't actually uh, dynamically update, which is why DyneMap got its name. Right. Uh, so this is, a, this is every chunk that Chad has so far walked around in that loaded on the screen, and it renders as Chad renders it for him. Uh, right. Those are the, the world chunks over there. The, see, remember the, uh, the lighting errors? <laughs> they are also on the map. <laughs> they're, they're right there for you to watch. Uh, over here on the side, you have a little bit of a... Of a uh, 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 I don't and know, if, tool. You, if you look, you haven't even stopped and started the server, and Multiverse has, and Multiverse and Dynamap both are great plugins because that's dynamically loaded the new world right. that you made. So there's OMG Land before, and if I didn't know that OMG Chad, the player that we have, was in there, I think you can, yep, there you click him, and there he is. Now this is interesting, this, this down view, but the really cool one is this 3D isometric sort of yeah. thing. On the top isometric. of... On top of that, so uh, this is all of the world so far. If I go into my Minecraft, oh, I closed it already. Well, if wait, did I? Then no, I didn't. I'm using uh, Magic Launcher, so I was very confused. So um, if I run over here to the other side of this pond, over on Dine Map, I think you're still zoomed in. Oh, I am. Hey, look at that. Isn't that awesome? So if I'm running over to the other side of the pond. Over on DyneMap, my character has also moved um, uh, on the map. And that'll all update live. Um, so we use this on Twit's Minecraft server as well. Yes. So let me actually show you what one of those maps looks like after... Well, I, I wanted to say one, one of the things that it does is, is based on your server's abilities. Uh, right now, you have a single server. Uh, you're the only, only person on it. It's not a big deal. So it's rendering pretty much one-to-one. DyneMap has its own threads that it runs off of, and I think they actually run on separate processors than the Minecraft, uh, uh, the bucket jar. Uh, so it, it renders pretty quickly for most of the time, but it 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 will it will queue any of the changes that it needs to do. So sometimes, for instance, like a big server like ours, you'll see it lag out a bit, some you know maybe five ten minutes for changes. But you can you can still see people walking around and hanging out and doing things, and and if, depending on how you configure it, you can even have it like have little chat bubbles pop up on people's heads so you can see these like these dynamic conversations happening all across the server which is really fun to look at that is very very cool okay so um i'm gonna go over this is twitcraft this is the um the minecraft server that uh twit uses um and, and this is just one of the worlds. <laughs> and this is just one of the worlds. so if you go over to the side you can see all of the worlds you can even see players so uh, let's go ahead. The cool part about this one is that you have actually configured it to be very high definition. That other one that I, I did isn't as high definition as this. So Now, by default, it uses the standard resolution for the images, so it doesn't zoom in quite as far. It doesn't have as, 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 as high resolution as these. Right. Uh, but we decided, hey, we have an awesome server. Let's go ahead and bump that up to full high definition range. Right. And so you can see uh, that even just that little torch, you can actually see torches placed on the ground you can see cakes over here you can this this uh uh denotes that this is the spawn point there's That's leoville yeah we're we're um uh cover we're covering the the movement of oh, uh, vantas vantas right now um this is curly's house which is now a zelda statue which is now a used zelda to, yeah used to be a link statue but t2 decided to remodel it for me when i was not online yep yep um, and so you can see users walking around our server. There's Mr. Underscore the oop, boss over here, um, things like that. And uh, uh, just pretty freaking awesome. You can see just how populated um, our little server has become. And this is, uh, this is Sky 5. 
uh, very, very, very cool. Okay, so that, I love it. <laughs> I know, me too. I, I, I hope that I am imparting um, how, how, how cool this is, um, and how easy I am blown away at just how easy uh, just installing that was. I thought that I would have to be changing config files, making sure things were pointing to the right place, just dropping it in the plugin. Uh, for for a lot of them, they are they are okay to go out of the box for you. The nitty gritty is when you're trying to make something that is going to last and something that your users are going to come back to, and so you can spend a you 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 don't don't frown upon how long you could spend in a config file, because uh, right. yeah they all they all don't work together perfectly immediately. So the very very last tool that we have is uh, something that we had on uh, our previous server that we don't use on mc.twit.tv, which is uh, which kind of blew my mind. The first it's, time. It's very fun. It's very fun. So yeah. this is called Magic Carpet. And we've all had this problem where you want to have, where you want to create a really, really big, awesome project. The problem is that it's it's gotten too big. Or say you need to get up back up to 20 blocks above the, the the ground level so that you can add a really cool line of glowstone. Or um, you're trying to get to the top of the ceiling to make it even larger, but the only way to do that would be to tunnel, you know, noob tower up, <laughs> make a thing, and then like, and then maybe make a floor just so that you can mine out, mine out the ceiling. So yes. mag Magic Carpet solves this problem. So... Well, this is one of the things that we used in our original server, mainly because our original server existed before there was creative mode. Um, oh. If you remember correctly. Yeah. yeah think we, about that. So we, we had fly mods. We had the golden boots, and we had a bunch of other things that we installed first. But Magic Carpet is one of the ones we loved so much. And it's such a silly, like, simple mod, which is why I kind of wanted to show it, because the other two are very intricate and very well-programmed and almost necessities in regards to servers. But this one, this one's just a fun one. And this is the kind of things you'll find in the plugins uh, website. Uh, so this one, it, all it does is allow you to have a Magic Carpet to walk around on. So all I have to do is type, what, slash MC? Uh, I think it's MC, yes. And, and there we go. Now so I have a magic carpet at my feet. So if you jump, it'll it'll pop up with right. you, and it just it auto generates as you walk around. And I right. love these little things that these these plugins can do. Right. Um, yeah. This blew my mind that the that the Minecraft client or, or the server could know where I was and generate these glass blocks. And also, if you break them, they just regenerate. Um, yeah. And even if you run into someone else with a magic carpet, like the carpets kind of merge yeah. into one. Thing. Yeah. Do uh do slash ml. I think they added that to this this version of it. Slash ml. Yeah, it's a magic carpet with. Oh, oh magic light is like, disabled. I had didn't didn't do it. And then if you shift, if you hold down shift, you'll go down, go. Uh, which is useful. Um, and, and so we, we, we used to use these primarily for building the pixel art in our in our survival world that we had. Because we didn't want to make a creative... Well, there was no thing as a creative mode. <laughs> uh, we wanted to just have a server that, that was all survival, and we had people like wanting to... like. It's like scaffolding, really, right. at that point. And it's just cool. It's just a cool little fun plugin to show off the um, the awesome diversity that is the uh, the plugin community. Yeah, and if I remember correctly, you could do slash MC, and then you could do like six. Yeah. Um, oh, from... must An odd number. An odd number. Okay, so, uh, so let's nine. say nine. Bam, and then it's much larger. So if, say, you were you were mining something from the ceiling, and you wanted to make sure that it caught on the magic carpet, um, mm -hmm. nine would be would be you know a number that that you'd want to use. That's still a good use for that. Yeah. The reason we don't use this on Twitcraft anymore is because it uh, it, it has no service. Uh, right. Purpose. Right. Because we only we the two worlds that we have is a survival world and a creative world. And in the survival world, this is an unfair advantage. And in the creative world, you have creative. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> no, that is a great point you bring up, though. I never thought about the reason for making an expanded carpet was for drops. Oh yeah, that's uh, what I did all the time. Yeah. I always assumed uh, it was for when, because if you do have server lag, the carpet kind of lags, and sometimes you fall a little bit. Right. Uh, but you know. Right. More power to you. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I used this is um my the 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 project that I was working on was making an underground city. Um, when someone, I think it was Snowshoe, told me about Magic Carpet, and it blew my mind that this could even exist. And then I think it was like two weeks after that, um, they 
that she taught us uh, or someone told me about gold boots and that <laughs> that so we've referenced it a few times just to tell you it was a mod where you could create gold boots just using the normal recipe and when you put them on you would fly you would like jet across so rocket the server, boots. It was rocket boots. It was so you'd hold down shift and you'd just go like, like. I remember my favorite moment was was you'd land and you could hear because the because the game would still know that you were traveling that fast and so you could hear your feet go as you landed on the ground. <laughs> Hate that plugin. Oh, so Hate it's, that plugin. It's so good. Unfortunately, like, it was it was very fun, but the trouble is moving that quickly obviously triggers uh, what we showed off last week, which is no cheat. And it also lags the bloody face off the server. Right, right. The server has to load all that information and push that to you through the internet. It's not very useful. Well, those are our three picks for the server. We showed off um, uh, multiverse, multiple worlds on a single server. We also showed off Dyne Map, beautiful maps for your server so that everyone can see. You can see players. It even has permissions. We didn't even get to it. It's so like you can hide. Uh, as a player, you can say Dyne Map Hide, um, and uh, uh, you, you, won't be, you won't show up on the dynamic map if, say, you're playing in PvP or you're trying to set up a secret base under the world. Um, and then finally, Magic Carpet, because it's just really cool, and it was the thing that made me appreciate what a bucket server can do. Thank you so much, Curly, for joining me on the show. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely. I love this show so much. I, I actually wanted to mention, just for the the, 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 the people that are, 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 are watching your show, or for you, really, um, I, get, I get fielded questions all the time, being a server guy that's running Minecraft, and I, I have to point them here all the time because this is what people really need, like some kind of sit-down explanation of the little intricacies that is Minecraft because people don't get it. I mean, there's there are resources all over the internet, but people don't have someone to just give them like a, a small snapshot of what needs to be or what they need for their own solutions because everyone runs into these problems. They need a bucket server or they need a anti-cheat or whatever, and, and you provide that. I like this a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, you do your own Minecraft awesomeness on the internet. Where can people find that? Uh, we do a lot of stuff on YouTube. Me, we, as in my sister and I, right. uh, we do a thing called Drunk Kids Gaming. Uh, I am now officially almost out of drunk. <laughs> uh, I drink. Uh, but we, we do a show, uh, which is primarily, actually, I think at this point, it's all uh, Minecraft uh, called Drunk Kids Gaming. It's youtube.com slash Drunk Kids Gaming. And we, we play adventure maps. We play some of the super hostels. Uh, sometimes we, we just play a single map and just build things. Right. Uh, but typically we're all drunk and we have a blast doing it. Um, we also do a live show on um, uh, for, for a website called indie-love.com uh, where on Thursdays we stream uh, some kind of map or right now we've been streaming the Super Hostel 14 uh, adventure and it's been a mess because uh, again we drink <laughs> on Thursdays and then play adventure Minecraft on one of the hardest maps known to man and that's uh that's usually uh, that's at twi twitch dot twitch dot tv slash uh, indie love for that one. Nice, nice. Um, and then I also want to mention that you are our server admin on the uh, on Twit's very and thank you Twit for letting me use your studio for um, this show uh, for Twit's very own Minecraft server. You are the unsung hero. Um, so please, I, I, what I wanted to say was just thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for. All the time that you volunteered uh, f to uh, you know us as fans of Minecraft to uh, Twit's very own Minecraft server. So uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, thank you for allowing me to do it because I enjoy it as much as I complain about it uh, <laughs> from all the kids yelling at me constantly and blowing up my Twitter box. I do actually enjoy just being part of the fun. You know, yeah, we're all doing fun, creative, great things. Well, that is it. Thank you, and that is it for this show. Um, I have been Chad Johnson the, the whole show long. I was Chad Johnson. I, I didn't change once. Um, if you would like to see our previous episodes, head on over to omgcraft.com. We have all the episodes back to episode one. You can uh, see them. Uh, episode two, we created a server. Episode three, I, I forget. That was, uh, that was at least three weeks ago, and I, I can't remember that long. If you have a suggestion that you would like uh, me to cover or me just to know, you can send mail at at mail at omgcraft.com. And then also, please remember to subscribe wherever 
you are watching this, be it YouTube or iTunes, and uh, comment and rate appropriately, even if you hate it. Even if you say camera one, camera two. Even if you say one, camera, camera one, two. camera two. There was one person who noticed that I do, and the camera three, and then uh, camera one, camera two. Never camera, camera three. three. Uh, we almost never cut to camera three, camera one. Anyway, <laughs> that's it. Thank you for watching. We will see you on another episode of OMG Craft. Bye.